Hello YouTube. As you can imagine, nations spy on each other. And when it comes to UFOs, uh, such spying is even more intensive. We know that uh, the Soviet Union spied on the United States, and we know that the United States has been spying on the, on the USSR uh, since at least 1940s. But we know that the CIA also declassifies some of these uh, documents pertaining to UFO research and how they actually operate in other countries collecting such information. The Soviets did not do it. They declassified some KGB documents pertaining to UFOs. And uh, you can see videos in my YouTube channel, two or three videos pertaining to the Soviet operations in this regard. But we don't really know how much the Soviets spied in the United States <clears throat> and elsewhere on UFOs. We do know about the meeting between Stalin and some of the top Soviet scientific officials uh, back in late 1940s. That's not the subject of this video. CIA has declassified some of, the, uh, of its reports and it's only the tip of the iceberg. The most interesting information, of course, has not been made available. And um, they have their own reasons for that. That's not why my today's video is about. What I do want to bring up is some of the most interesting information that has become available because of the CIA declassification. And it shows you what they paid attention to, how some of the agents worked based on this information, and what was it really that concerned them. The first report is serial WAO5010740091. And this is, um, this has to do with an interview given by the Deputy Minister of Defense of the USSR back in 1991 about UFO sightings. If you remember, this was the last year the Soviet Union existed, and as I said in my other videos, very interesting information came out, became available in those fateful years. So this report was uh, titled USSR UFO Sighting Number 3, and it states that leading Soviet newspapers have increased their reporting on UFO sightings in recent months. One particular highlight was a lengthy interview with Soviet Deputy Minister of Defense Ivan Tretyak in the number 9 November Literaturna Gazeta, a large weekly newspaper with national circulation. Tretyak, who also holds the positions of Commander-in-Chief of the Air Defense Forces and General of the Army, confirmed that fighter interceptors had encountered unidentified flying objects in Soviet airspace. He said that one unidentified flying machine had been photographed by interceptor pilots and that optical and thermal signals from it had been detected on the pilot's target screens. Although some stealth-like ca capacity prevented the recording of radar signals. Literaturna Gazeta columnist Maroz asked Tritiak if the air defense forces regard the flight of UFOs in Soviet airspace as a violation of the sovereignty of the USSR. Tritiak replied that it is premature to see the UFOs as a threat to Soviet security, a sovereignty because although pilot reports indicated that the UFOs appear to be of artificial origin, their real nature has not yet been determined. Observing that most previous UFO sightings had been explained as a natural phenomena or as a misinterpretation of optical phenomena associated with rocket launches of the or the artificial debris that is congesting space near Earth, Tritiak added, many of the phenomena taken for UFOs 
are caused by the penetration of cosmic rays to ozone holes, which are formed during rocket launches. He revealed that the military knew some of the famous UFO sightings in the late 1970s could have been explained by making this effect public knowledge, but that for security reasons nothing was written about this at the time. General Tretiak replied negatively when asked whether the Air Defense Forces had detected any of the UFOs cited in five recent cases of mass observation. As an example of a case of mass observation of a UFO, in this case by the Air Defense Forces, Tritiak cited an unidentified flying vehicle apparatus that was reported by his chief of staff, Colonel General Maltsev, in March 1990. And we'll get to Maltsev later too. Tritiak stated that one particular UFO had been photographed and optical and thermal signals from it had shown up on the target screens of the interceptors. In the words of Tritiak, for quite a long time, from 20, 200, tw sorry, 20 to 2300 hours in the region northeast of Moscow, in period Yaslovsky, Zagorsk, Fryazino, Kirzach, two pulsating objects formed during rocket launches. He revealed that the military knew some of the famous UFO sightings in the late 1970s could have been explained by making this effect public knowledge, but that for security reasons nothing was written about this at the time. General Tretiak replied negatively when asked whether the Air Defense Forces had detected any of the UFOs cited in five recent cases of mass observation. As an example of a case of mass observation of a UFO, in this case by the Air Defense Forces, Tritiak cited an unidentified flying vehicle apparatus that was reported by his chief of staff, Colonel General Maltsev, in March 1990. And we'll get to Maltsev later too. Tritiak stated that one particular UFO had been photographed and optical and thermal signals from it had shown up on the target screens of the interceptors. In the words of Tritiak, for quite a long time, from 20, 200, 20, sorry, 20 to 2300 hours in the region northeast of Moscow, in period Yaslovsky, Zagorsk, Fryazino, Kirzach, two pulsating objects called UNICLAS slash LDPMU. Um, lights were observed in the sky moving as if they were fixed in position in relation to each other, like the side lights of an airplane. But this was not an airplane. We have written testimony from eyewitnesses and photographs. Some observers were even convinced that the speed of the ob objects depended on the frequency of the pulsation of the lights. Tritiak noted that although the object could be observed on a radar screen and photographed, it could not be registered by onboard radar recording equipment. He explained that the three signals which, came, which come in front from a target, the radar signal, the optical signal, and the thermal signal all show up on the screen of the site. It is as if they duplicate each other, but the recording device registers only the radar signal. And in this March 2 case, there was none. Tritak said he believes that the UFO cannot be recorded on radar because it is not an ordinary flying machine which can be recorded on the narrow, relatively narrow band on which air defense forces Raiders operate. Tritiak further explained that the UFO appeared to have stealth-like characteristics, stating his hope 
that the technological progress will make it possible to widen the cap capability of raiders to counteract stealth features, Tritak said, it is known, for example, that there are a number of materials and shapes which sharply lower the radar and optical profile of an object. This is precisely what is being achieved in the American stealth program. I admit that the measures aimed at countering this program, which we are now taking, will simultaneously promote the solution of the UFO riddle. Tritak suggested that if special observation posts were organized and the frequencies on which raiders operate were expanded, we most likely would see more. For this, however, very great resources are necessary. The ground raiders of the air defense forces also did not record the UFO target. When asked why he, as commander-in-chief, of the air defense forces did not order the UFO shoot down, particularly since his predecessor in the post of commander in chief, as well as the minister of defense, had been removed from their position when they were unable to prevent a flight over our territory and a landing in Moscow of the inoffensive sports plane that was flown by Rust. Tritak pointed out that the UFOs encountered thus far by his pilots have appeared to pose no extraterrestrial threat and that there is still no proof that UFOs are of extraterrestrial origin or flown by intelligent beings. Moreover, he warned, it would be foolhardy to launch an unprovoked attack against an object that may possess formidable capacities for retaliation. He said that even if it is proven some of the UFOs are a product of a highly organized intelligence from a significantly more developed civilization than our own, any fight with such objects and their crews before a clarification of their intentions would be futile. Now, this report was declassified uh, back in February of 2010. In the future, I'll tell you more complicated cases, but I wanted you to pay attention to what Ritak said. Other Russian commanders, former Soviet commanders, revealed much more. But this was in 1991, very interesting time in the history of that country. And uh, of course, this immediately attracted interest of the CIA. So. Um, it, like I said, there will be more cases and I will put up more videos. I ask you if, if you can help me uh, to please support me through the Patreon link and uh, please tell others about my UFO and USO research and my YouTube channel. I appreciate your attention and if you can please subscribe uh, to my channel as well. Thank you.